painting is a lot like decorating a house. So let's just say it's an empty room. You put in the big pieces first. You're gonna put down the sofa, and then maybe the area rug, and the coffee table, and then you're gonna work your way to the side chair, and then you're gonna add in all of the accessories. I start off with the biggest brushes possible. I kind of work all over it, and then I start adding the detail. Today I'm going to share how I took an image from Pinterest and created this landscape dresser. This is a beginner tutorial using basic color blending and color blocking. Stay tuned to the end. I'm going to tell you why we are moving our store back to Cedros from Encinitas. Four years ago, right outside that window, all these people came. They were here to watch Dion and I paint. We put our furniture up on tables so that we're not crouched down to paint really low. Dion just gets her water bottle out, she gets her brushes out, and lickety split, she gets that thing done before the class is even halfway over, and she's talking to people, and I am laser -fucking. I got this dresser off of Facebook, and it came with a very hard layer of latex paint. If you want to blend, the best thing to do is put a base coat on and let it sit overnight. Because DIY paint is so chalky and porous, it serves as a primer coat. So when you go back to blend, it will absorb your blending and kind of work like a dry sponge. DIY paint is easily reactivated with water, so you will have a much easier time if you put that base coat on and give it a good 24 hours. It dries fast, but it cures slower. If you don't have time to wait, you can hit it with a hair dryer or a heat dryer to speed up the cure time. Find a little spot in the shade, pink lemonade, pink lemonade. Everything DIY paint is clay based. It's mostly clay, like 80%. And it's just nine ingredients. It's non toxic and it's safe to use around your pets, inside, and without gloves. I was getting out the thick paint and I was smushing it on and I was going to do this whole textured situation and then I was going to blend over the top of it and it is hot. It is September 9th, 2019. It is turning out really bad. Just in case you don't believe me, I've inserted a picture here. I've taught several workshops but struggled with blending. Stay tuned to find out why. Say you're blending two colors together. You want to have one brush for the one color, and then you want to have another brush for the other color, and then you have the neutral brush. I, I learned this from Chris Donna of Bella Renovar. You have the neutral brush that doesn't have any paint on it, and that becomes the, the brush that blends the two colors together to become friends. Mixing Kissing Booth and Hay Sailor to create a purple color for this landscape. Notice that my inspiration photo is much longer than the shape of my dresser. I did a few things wrong at the beginning, which I correct later in this video. Here I'm trying to get that main horizon line in first. Keep in mind that I put that layer of mint chip down and let it dry for 24 hours so that these coats of paint will not reactivate that mint chip. I'm using three brushes, one for each color and one as a neutral brush to blend the two together. This is the picture that I found right here. I got it off of Pinterest. I will have to find the name of the artist and insert it somewhere in this video. I cropped it down so it was similar dimensions to my dresser. Say you had an actual picture like this, you could take a copy of it and draw some grid lines on it and get your composition down. I don't know if that's cheating. I just need to do what I need to do so I can learn. This is a picture of Bobby and I on the beach. It's either Fiji or Mexico. Here I am looking at my reference photo and trying to get the main color blocks down and I'm blending as I go. What I didn't realize was that my scale and composition were not correct. I had my horizon line too high. I should have just put all the colors down in main blocks without blending and then went back for the detail. It takes me a while to realize this. I have to step back, look at the reference photo, and then look at the dresser again before I realize that I did it wrong. This is a picture of everybody who came to the workshop that day, standing in front of my store, right outside that window there. 
draw names and two people get to take home the furniture that Dion and I paint. And I always feel sorry for the person who wins my piece because most of the time I don't finish it and it doesn't turn out as good as the ones in my videos. I can't remember who won my piece. Maybe if they're watching they can say in the comments. Watch in slow motion as this brush just falls off the handle. It was brand new. I was using it for the first time. Not all products are created equal. You can see here that I'm pulling one color of paint down into the other. This makes a big difference for blending. And this is the point where I step back and look at my dresser. I realize that I have my color blocks in the wrong place and I need to paint over part of it. You can see right down here that there's one big blue chunk up here and there's lighter blue in the middle. And then you just look at it as color blocks. I just got the main color blocks in place so that the composition would be correct. And then I went back and I blended. So then I went back to my reference photo and I divided it into a grid and then I took out some chalk and I tried to block off the main areas of color. Now I'm going over the purple shaded area with some white because I had it up too high. The great thing about DIY paint is that the whites will cover the dark colors very easily and you don't need very much paint. With DIY it's five times more pigmented than other formulas. You can see here that I totally changed my method. I'm just blocking in color and not worrying at all about the blending. I'm going to go back later and go over it, add some highlights and shading and blend all these blocks together and then put in the detail. I love you, Madeline. clock is ticking and it was looking like a big leopard spot type of piece of furniture with a lot of colors. There's 20 minutes left. Dion is already done. She's painting on the back of jean jackets and taking pictures with people and I am embarrassed. I am just praying inside my head. I don't know what to do. Every brush stroke that I put on is just making it look worse and I just felt lost because I had no clue how to fix it. God, I need help. All these people are looking at me and I've got nothing. It would take a miracle to turn this thing around in the next 20 minutes. All of a sudden, I felt like God answered that prayer. That I felt your key. Now that I have all my main color blocks in the right place, I'm going back to add some variety of hues and to blend all the colors together. first layer had already completely dried, so in order to blend, you need more wet paint. I'm just putting this wet paint on top of each other side by side and pulling it into each other by using different brushes and pulling it in different directions. Once I get the paint sort of mixed up and blended, then I go back and straighten out the brush strokes by going with the wood grain or with the direction of the particular mountain or body of water in this landscape. The table that my piece of furniture was sitting on broke. My piece crashed to the ground and it broke into at least three pieces. It had like long spindly legs and it was, I'll show you a picture of it, but it just broke into three pieces and everybody was like, oh no. And inside I was like, yes, I am out of this. The person who won my piece, I'll just give her like a gift certificate for the shop and she can buy paint and I am free and thank you God. Now I'm putting in some of the details of the sunset and the sky. I like to move my brush in a swirling motion and it takes very little paint because our paint is so highly saturated. In fact, if you get too much paint on your brush, it will hinder your blending. You almost want a dry brushed effect in some of the areas. to 
the little details in the blending, my brushes get smaller. For different little areas and minuscule parts of the, the look that I'm going for. But you want to go in all the different directions. I was always told in the past to paint with the wood grain. So you're gonna go with the wood grain, but you're also gonna go against it, and you may even go in circles sometimes, and you just get that paint spread out so that it looks more organic. I could do like your basic ombre blend, but if it was anything off the grid, I couldn't do it because I didn't know that you need to go in all the ways. Pulling out the drawers and painting the inside edges so that the transitions will look smoother. Always static when I try to speak. Not an addict, I just need some sleep. As I started to put these color blocks in, I wasn't sure if it was going to work, and it didn't seem to come together until the very end. Painting takes a lot of faith. You just keep going with it. I'm always questioning myself, wondering if I'm doing it right. It's just a matter of trying it and trusting the process and correcting when it doesn't look right. Karen Berg. Karen Berg. She's tall and she knows how to use power tools and she's sitting in the audience and Bobby is there too and before I know it they are up on the stage and they've got drills and tools. It's okay you don't have to fix it we'll just you know the class is almost over but no the two of them just put it all back together. Yay! You're our hero! No! What do I do now? Okay Debbie carry on. Just carry on and paint some more. Now I'm trying to go in and add the grasses like the inspiration photo. I didn't like the way that this turned out. It was too abstract. So I ended up going off script and doing something completely different from the inspiration photo. When you have most of your details in and all of your paint is blended the way that you like, I really like to go in and add the pigment powders. The pigment powders are super easy to blend and they're great for adding pops of color or blending two colors together that would be difficult to do with paint, like orange and blue. Because DIY paint dries so porous and chalky, all you need to do is take a wet brush and dip it right into the pigment powder or use a wet rag to blend. I've tried doing this to paint that has already been sealed or to a different formula that has a slick surface and it doesn't work. You need that dry chalky surface to get the pigments to absorb into the paint and to stick. It's like 10 minutes before the class is over and people look hungry and they want to leave and it's hot. We all say that furniture goes through an ugly stage. This got stuck in the ugly stage and I had no idea how to bring it out. I had to just face the embarrassment and so I turn to the people. There was like 30 of them. I don't know. I don't know what to do to fix it, but we can take this as a learning experience. Because I wasn't happy with the grasses that I had created, I pulled up a picture of Dion's furniture. I wanted to create some more detailed grasses, but first I needed to add mint chip over what I had already painted so that the light would come through the background when I painted the grasses again. The right tools help a lot. That would make sense to most people, but I have always thought, oh, a brush is a brush. You can make any brush work, and you can, but the specific tools can really help. So I got out a brush that looked like this, and I started doing the blades of grass. Then I stepped back and I looked at it, and it didn't look good. It was very uniform. It didn't look organic. I sent a picture to Kelly and Dion, and I asked them, what is wrong with my grass? Dion sent me a video with some tips. I'm gonna insert it here. All right, Debbie. I love where you're going with this piece. The only thing that I would do would be bringing the foreground closer. So I would do like some beach grasses up close at the bottom of the piece. 
take your fan brush and kind of dance around, but create some wispy grass. So the wind is like sweeping across there and blowing a little bit and, and it'll pull the foreground closer up to the viewer. And then it'll make your beach scene appear even more distant towards the horizon. Keep going girl, you've got this and you're using the best paint. This is the fan brush, and this is really good for making blades of grass. And Dion has a technique where she like pulls her brush and then kind of spins it around at the end, but it totally helped me make grass. This is from the turquoise iris. It's good, and it helped me take my grass to the next level. <laughs> Problem was, my fan brush was at Encinitas, and I didn't want to stop painting and go over there. So I'm using some smaller artist brushes. I'm using some different colors. I'm trying to sweep that brush across the surface like Dion said. It's looking a little bit better, but it still isn't quite right. <laughs> so I just put it all on Dion to fix my piece of furniture, and I just looked at her with desperation. Please help me. And she comes over with her little brush and her water bottle, and in five minutes, maybe ten, she she just blends it all together, softens all the transitions, makes it cohesively turn into this beautiful, soft, lovely, and she just whip, 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 and it was done. And I'm just looking at her in amazement. She's magic. She's got the magic fingers on. So finally, I went and got my fan brush at Encinitas, and it really helped a lot. But I was still not happy with my mountains. So I texted my friend Kelly Weiler from Girl Upcycled, and she has some great tips. Debbie, that painting is absolutely beautiful. So a couple of tips that I think will help you. Thinking about that background where the mountain is, so it's all the bohemian blue, right? Which, yes, it is in the shadows, but even though something's in the shadows, it needs just the tiniest, tiniest tinge of a lighter color. So you're going to add a little bit of light color into your bohemian blue on your plate. So that is going to give it a more realistic kind of a feel. You always need a little light to show off the darkness and you always need a little bit of darker value to show off the light. I got out Dion's magazine. These are her mountains and she has the light hitting one side. Can you see how that is? It seemed kind of scary and advanced to me. I painted in the light. I shadowed my mountains and put light in there and it totally made a big, big difference. With the help of a reference photo from Dion's magazine and Kelly's awesome tips, I was able to add some highlights and shadows into the mountains and it really made a big difference. I felt like I was almost done with this piece of furniture. Then I decided to take my yellow pigment and go in with a tiny brush to create some more contrast and the illusion of light coming up from behind the mountains. I really wanted to know, Dion, okay, can you please tell me what did I not do that you did so that the next time maybe I can do it? She was quiet for a few minutes and contemplative. All I can remember about it was I was using too much water. Maybe I was using too much paint and too much water. I don't remember. It was all very stressful. Bobby volunteered to sand down the rest of the dresser so I could create a special finish. It had caked on latex and he spent two days sanding it down. What I'm doing here is called a ceruse finish. Basically, you take a wire brush, open up the wood grain, and then put watered down white paint, wipe it back, and show off the wood grain. Saw this technique on Chris Donna's channel. She goes into way more details, so I'm gonna put a link to her video below. You get the white paint down into the wood grain, and then you wipe it back. Because DIY paint is so easily reactivated with water, this was a pretty simple process, and it made the rest of the dresser have a driftwood effect. Honestly, I didn't even try to blend again for probably a year. I don't wanna relive that. And then another class comes around, and I would do anything except for blend. I 
I've taught many classes with Dion and she has hundreds of tutorials, but it wasn't until recently that I feel like I finally learned how to blend. I really just needed to stop and take the time to pay attention. I'm finishing off this dresser by adding the wax. You can see that it intensifies the color. One thing to keep in mind is that because the paint and the pigments are easily reactivated, let it sit for 24 hours before you put on any top coat. This will prevent reactivating the paint and changing the look. If you are wanting to do your Christmas shopping early, we have marked down almost everything on our website and in our store because we have 40 days to get out of Encinitas and bring the shop over to here. I will tell you more details in the next video, so be sure to subscribe and... Letting you know you, you're not alone. I'm very excited about moving back to Solana Beach. We will be having a lot more classes and events, and I will have the time to make more videos. So stay tuned. Dion and I were standing right over there where those doors are. We have a lot of work to do to fix this place up. This is gonna be my filming studio and where we ship out all the things from the internet and outside is another garden where we will teach classes and be open on the weekends. Filmed a really cute ending to this video, but my camera settings were wrong so you can't hear what I'm saying, but keep watching because there's a surprise. In DIY paint in your area or to sell it in your store or to find links to all the people and products mentioned in this video, click the link below. Too easy now to sing sad song. To sing sad song. Yeah. Lying on the ground, never help no one. When you get knocked down, you know that you gotta get back up. My last tip for you, which was probably gonna be the most fun, is when you come in and you're gonna work on anything that's art related, have a piece of canvas that is just there for you to play on. And you're gonna warm up on that canvas, okay? You're gonna get your body in motion. You're going to just get your mind in that creative mode, okay? And I think that's gonna help you as you transfer going from your business details switching over to your creative mind. Give it a try, let me know how it helps, and I can't wait to see your finished piece. I love it.